Hi everyone, my name is John Helveston. I'm an assistant professor in engineering management and systems engineering at the George Washington University. And today I wanna to talk about a package I built called Logit R, uh, which is useful for obtaining willingness to pay estimates from utility models. Um, so I think everyone here is familiar with choice-based conjoint um, where you show people different alternatives and you ask them to make choices. So let's say I was doing a conjoint on yogurt preferences. I might show people a question like this where I show them different brands and different prices. Uh, and every time I show a choice question, I vary the levels of price or brand. Um, so I'm gonna use this as my illustrative example uh, throughout today's talk. Um, so if you ran a choice uh, survey like this, you might wanna estimate people's preferences for these attributes, price and brand. And the most straightforward way to do that would be to start by defining your utility model um, to try to estimate these marginal utilities. So you might assign a coefficient for the brands given by beta here and the coefficient for price uh, alpha. Uh, and if you estimated this model as a, a logit model, you might get some parameters like this, uh, which are helpful and intuitive. I can tell you that price is negative, which makes intuitive sense. People don't like paying more for the same thing. Uh, and I can see some differences in people's um, brand preferences here. However, these are coefficients in units of utility which is somewhat abstract. And so it, it's not as concrete as say um, dollars, like how much would you pay for that brand? Um, so to get at that, if you wanted to estimate willingness to pay, you could convert it by dividing everything uh, by the negative of that price coefficient. Um, so I'm calling this omega because it looks like a W. And if you were to do that, you would be able to get estimates like this, where now I'm showing you how much people are willing to pay in dollars for each of these brands. So I can tell you, uh, for example, people on average were willing to pay $3.72 for the Yoplait brand, um, all else being equal. All right, so that's one way to get willingness to pay. And I think this is probably the most common thing people do to get willingness to pay. Um, an alternative approach is to directly estimate it uh, by redefining the utility model, all right? So if you have this utility model, which I call being in the preference space, uh, you can make some quick substitutions and redefine it so that willingness to pay can be directly estimated. All right, so when you run this model, your parameters will already be in units of dollars rather than utilities. All right, so what's the difference? You know, I could do this and can calculate willingness to pay, or I can directly estimate it. So is there one, you know, any reason why you might want to do one versus the other? Uh, so first of all, if you estimate a preference-based model and compute willingness to pay, these parameters unfortunately have an undefined mean invariance. Um, so alpha and beta from this model are assumed to have asymptotically normal distributions. So that's going to imply that the error around my willingness to pay is a ratio of normals, which is a Cauchy distribution, uh, which uh, does not have um, uh, nice features when it comes to moments. All right, so that's already something of a problem uh, in terms of like a theoretical issue with computing willingness to pay after estimating a preference-based model. Uh, something I see, I think, more in practice, though, is when you move to a mixed logit model, where now I am assuming uh, that people's preferences across the population vary according to some distribution. So let's say I made beta normally distributed, and I said alpha is going to be normally distributed. Now the willingness to pay across the population also is going to, in this case, follow a Cauchy distribution because it's going to be a ratio of normals. And so that's gonna produce this very unreasonably large variance in the willingness to pay when you look across uh, the population. Um, so just to illustrate this, I wanna do a quick comparison of these two different spaces uh, using a mixed logit model um, for the preference for the Yoplait brand. All right, so in a preference-based model, I'm saying the coefficient for utility coefficient for brand is normally distributed. In the willingness to pay space model, I'm saying the willingness to pay for that brand is normally distributed. So here's some results uh, from uh, three different versions of a model. In the first one, I'm assuming my price parameter is fixed. And so when I get willingness to pay, I'm taking this beta, a normal, dividing it by a fixed parameter. And it turns out to be just about the same as my willingness to pay space model. So the gray here is the willingness to pay distribution from this model, the red is from, from this model. 
So if you're going to have a fixed alpha, it usually doesn't affect things too much. But as soon as I make that alpha distributed across my population, which you might expect, people don't all have the same sensitivity to price, uh, things start to get a little wonky. Uh, so I'll have a normal distribution divided by a normal, and I get this very large variance uh, in my willingness to pay from that preference space model. Now I'll note that this gray here, this is actually the exact same result for the willingness to pay model. There's no difference here. It's just zoomed out. If you can tell the X axes are, are not the same across these charts. Um, so this is going to lead to a very different conclusion about how willingness to pay is distributed across my population. Um, what I think is even potentially more concerning is if I make my alpha log normally distributed, which you might expect people to do, if you wanted to force that price parameter, let's say to be strictly positive, this would be one way to do that. Uh, what you're in, implying then for willingness to pay is you're taking a normal dividing by a log normal and you get some very strange distribution here uh, that actually has a tight variance but a totally different mean from my mean over here. So just depending on how you assume alpha is going to be modeled in your preference based model, you're gonna get three totally different conclusions of what the willingness to pay is across the population. Um, so this is something that I think is, is uh, an important effect to keep in mind if you are estimating one of these, like a mixed logit model, when you move to compute willingness to pay from it, you can get wildly different uh, conclusions. So that's a more serious difference between uh, these two approaches for getting willingness to pay. I'm not the first to identify these issues. I just want to acknowledge that, that this issue about uh, willingness to pay having undefined moments um, when it's computed from a preference-based model, this has been noted before. And in this study, they came up, up with an approach to try to help deal with that problem. Um, and then this idea that you're going to get unreasonably large variance in willingness to pay on a mixed logit model, um, this has been known um, and shown before many years ago. So these are common problems, but I don't think they've been emphasized um, very much. Um, and there are a bunch of other things, though, that I want to add to this conversation. So first of all, there's just a lot of practical considerations to keep in mind about uh, which space you're going to estimate your model in. Um, willingness to pay space models, they produce these immediately interpretable results with correct standard errors on the estimate. Um, so I think this is actually uh, something that just maybe gets underemphasized, that when I run this, based, uh, this preference based model, and I have these units of utilities, I think it's hard to really immediately understand what these values are and interpret them. Whereas over here in willingness to pay space, I have units of dollars that have absolute value. So um, as soon as I run my model, and I look at my results, I immediately can uh, assess um, whether I feel like this is, you know, uh, an, a, a, this is an appropriate result or it, it makes kind of consistent sense, a logical sense to me. Uh, whereas I, I can't necessarily do that over here. Um, Another practical consideration is that willingness to pay that est estimate can be directly compared across different models, even if it's from different data sets. Okay, so to kind of unpack this a little bit, we first have to talk about normalization. Um, so a more general form of this utility model is that we have um, beta star and alpha star and some unknown variance um, in my error term. And so actually, in general, we cannot identify all of these separately. We can't identify our preference coefficients and this variance term. So what we typically do is divide everything by the, the, um, the scale of our error term. And so we rewrite it in this form. But what these coefficients really mean is that they're, they're proportional to that scale term. So if I estimated the same model on two different data sets, I wouldn't be able to directly compare those coefficients. I couldn't take alpha from here and alpha from there and say, oh, uh, these people are more sensitive to price changes. That wouldn't be a, an, an apples to apples comparison because they could have scale differences. In a willingness to pay space model, um, we normalize it in a different way. You're normalizing to this alpha parameter. So that parameter, the willingness to pay itself is independent of scale. And so I could actually estimate this on two different data sets and directly compare those coefficients and objectively say, yes, these people are willing to pay more for X than maybe these people are. Um, so that is something that just helps with cross data set comparison. And it's particularly, I think, useful if you're looking at uh, maybe a longitudinal study or you're doing like a um, lit review and you're looking at all these different studies and trying to compare them against each other 
you could compare the willingness to pays, but you wouldn't be able to compare these preference coefficients. So that's just another uh, thing to keep in mind. And there's a few other more just general theoretical ideas that there's no theoretical basis for believing that marginal utility versus marginal willingness to pay should follow some distribution. Like I don't have a psychological reason for saying people's underlying utility for brand should be normal, uh, normally distributed versus their willingness to pay for that brand should be normally distributed. So I think both of these are somewhat of uh, convenience assumptions that we as modelers use. So I'm gonna go with the one that's even more convenient for me to interpret, which is um, the willingness to pay one. And then finally, um, if you're interested in prediction, there hasn't been a lot of strong evidence that either of these spaces sort of systematically predict better. Um, there's been studies that have found the preference space fit the model better um, or fit the data better and other studies that did some out of sample predictions and they were basically identical. So I think on, on the prediction front, it's gonna be more um, specific to your context, specific to your data set. And so in the, in the lack of strong evidence one way or another, I'll probably pick the one that's more convenient for me. Okay, so with all of that in mind, maybe I've convinced you that uh, it might be worth estimating a willingness to pay space model. Uh, the problem is most software is not built for that. Most software is built to estimate this model um, and not this model. And so that's why I built Lojidar. I built this package from the ground up with the intention of being able to support either of these utility parameterizations. So I just wanna walk through a little demo of the, of the package and kind of show you how it works and, and um, hopefully some of you will, will try it out. Okay, so this package um, can support a few different things. It, it can support uh, multinomial logit models as well as mixed logit models with normal and log normal parameters distributions. Um, and it can also handle either of these um, preference or willingness to pay space utility parameterizations. It also has a bunch of other um, handy tools for working with uh, willingness to pay and making predictions after you've estimated a model. So I'll talk about those. Um, all the source code is available here on GitHub. So you can go peruse all of the code yourself. It's all open source. Um, so you can check if I've done my math correctly. Uh, and the package um, documentation is also here. You can see it from this website. So there's lots of um, examples here and articles about how uh, things are being done. So I encourage you to go check that out um, if you want to use this uh, package. Um, so you can install it from the CRAN. It is uh, the first version I, is available as of January this year, um, but I strongly recommend you install the development version if you wanna use it today, because even since January, we've made a lot of improvements and found a lot of little tiny bugs. So um, this version, which will soon come out again as the version two on CRAN, um, this one is a lot more, I would say, robust. So use that one. Uh, this package does require a pretty strict format uh, for your data, but hopefully for all the Sawtooth users, this is a convenient thing because the way the data are structured is very similar to how choice data gets exported from Sawtooth. So um, hopefully this will be intuitive for you. Uh, but it's structured in a way where every row has to be an alternative from a choice observation and those observations do not have to be symmetric. So you could have um, a case where they saw two alternatives and the next observation they saw three or four. Uh, it doesn't have to be symmetric across individuals or across the whole data set. Um, you have to have at least some certain variables to help identify key things. So you have to identify choice. You need a variable that is a one or a zero for which alternative was chosen. Um, you have to have an obs ID, an observation ID. So if you had a conjoint of just two alternatives, the first two rows would be one, one, and then two, two, and then three, three, and so on. That's identifying which rows belong to which choice observation. And then finally, you have to have any parameter names that um, you wanna use as covariates like price or brand. Okay, so here's an example. Um, we're back to that yogurt example I talked about at the beginning. Um, so you can see I have choice uh, with ones and zeros defining which choice, which alternative was chosen. You can see the observation ID. So the first four rows here um, was the first observation. The next four rows is the second observation and so on. Um, I actually also tell you which alternative um, uh, was shown to each person. And then I have price and brand. So for example, in this first observation, you know, these were the options available and this person chose uh, this one, which was the Weight Watchers one. 
All right, so if you want to estimate a preference-based uh, model with just fixed parameters, this is how you can do it. You load the library up top. Um, the main function is called logit-r. Uh, you have to tell it what data set you're working with. So this is that yogurt data frame. Identify the choice column and the observation ID column, and then whatever columns um, are the covariates in your model. So this is the model it's going to be estimating. Um, so price and brand are going to be the, the coefficients in, in this model. Uh, once it's estimated, it happens in like a split second. Uh, you, you can use summary of the model name and you'll get something like this that prints out in R. So it tells you all of your summary information about the model, how it ran, um, whether it converged or not. Um, here's your coefficients, um, some information about the, the model fits. Um, so that's the preference space model. If you wanted to now estimate this in a willingness to pay space, all you have to do is change a few of these arguments to this function. So first of all, you're, you no longer have a price parameter, right? In a, in a willingness to pay space model, there is no parameter on price. Uh, you end up having a scale parameter that you're estimating, right? So uh, brand is the only parameter that I'm estimating that has a willingness to pay on it. I have to tell the model which column was price because it is gonna come into this utility here. And I have to tell it, I want this to be in the willingness to pay space. The default for this is pref, P-R-E-F. Um, so on this one, I didn't have to specify that. All right, so if I run my willingness to pay space model, I get a summary output that is almost identical, except now the model space is willingness to pay and these coefficients are in dollars, which is really convenient. Okay, so that's my two different preference and willingness to pay space models. Um, I wanna caution you here though, that the willingness to pay space uh, the log likelihood function for that is not convex because this is not a linear and parameters utility function anymore. Um, so you are not guaranteed that you're going to be reaching a global solution here. You could very well be running into some local minima and, 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 the, and the optimizer stops there. So to try to help get around that problem, we built in a multi-start into this uh, function. So there's an options uh, that has a ton of other options about controlling the optimizer and, and how the algorithm runs. But one of the simplest things you can do is just say, I wanna run you know, more than one uh, iterations of this. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna continuously loop 10 times. And then every time it's gonna use a different starting point so that it can hopefully explore that log likelihood space a little better. And hopefully I converge on a global solution. And so if you did that, then your summary function is going to tell you the quick outputs of every one of these runs. And you can see that some of these did not run uh, to the same solution. So some of these ran to other solutions, but most of them looks like they came to this uh, solution. So uh, this one says run six was the, the best one. So this is the, the model that it's going to summarize at the bottom. Okay. So that's still just fixed uh, parameter models, they, uh, a homogeneous model. If you wanted to estimate a mixed logit model where you're now going to uh, allow these preference parameters to be distributed across your population, all you have to do is define some random parameters. So I can say I want my brand to be normally distributed. And when I do that, um, I'm gonna get a model like this where I get a mean. So I have a mu uh, uh, for every one of my brands and I have a sigma for every one of my brands. And so that's the two parameters determining a normal distribution for the preference for that brand. And same, same thing can be done in the willingness to pay space. If I wanted willingness to pay to be normal, I can redefine my model to say, I'm gonna estimate willingness to pay on brand and I want brand to be normally distributed. And so you get something like this, but again, now these are in, in units of dollars. Um, right now, uh, as I mentioned, the only parameters that are uh, supported are normal and log normal. Um, and so for now, if you wanted log normal, you just make it LN. All right, so that's the basics of the model uh, of, the, of the package and how it works. It does come with a bunch of other little helper functions for just some common uh, computations you might wanna run. So for example, if you did compute a preference-based model, and are you estimated that model and you want to compute willingness to pay, there is a function called WTP where you can hand it a preference-based model, tell it which parameter was the price parameter, and it basically just does this for you. It just does that division um, and it computes standard errors um, using a simulation approach to, to get an estimate of standard error on the willingness to pay estimate. You can also compare willingness to pay across two different models. So if you ran a preference-based model 
and an equivalent willingness to pay space model and you wanted to check, you know, did these get the same kind of solution for willingness to pay, you can compute it this way and it'll basically just line those parameters up next to each other and tell you the difference. So in both of these models, these are fixed parameter models. And most of the time you end up with the exact same uh, result, the same estimate for willingness to pay. Finally, there is also a simulation function for predicting shares. So once you've estimated a model, uh, any of these models in any space, you can then say, all right, I'm going to define some set of alternatives. Um, so here is one set I just took from the, uh, a random sec a set from the yogurt data. Uh, it has some prices and brands. And I want to predict market shares uh, for this particular set of alternatives. So I can use simulate shares. I hand it the model. I hand it these alternatives. And I can set the you know, confidence level I want of whatever my um, uncertainty range from low to high is. So this is my result. It looks like Dannon was the most popular, has a lower price, and people don't really like Highland yogurt. So it doesn't get a big share. OK, so that's the package. Uh, and I look forward to any discussion you all have, any questions you have about it. Again, the documentation is here. I encourage you to go take a look at it. Um, there's a lot more information there about the package and, and what's going on in the back end. And if you want to see these slides themselves, they are actually hosted on online at this URL, so you can go reference them. All right, thank you for your attention, and I look forward to answering any questions you have.